preach you today in extraordinary times. The coronavirus has uh, placed uh, so many of us indoors that we're unable to be able to gather together as a church. And this brings uh, so many things, uh, uh, so many pressures on our hearts as we uh, think spiritually. Uh, Christian life was meant to be done in community, one with another, where we can see each other and experience uh, the joy of singing together as a group and hearing uh, God's word preached as a group, and then being able to socialize afterwards as a group. Naturally, with us being apart from each other, this makes it uh, more difficult to take of uh, something very meaningful and valuable to all of us as Christians, and that is the Lord's Supper. This video today is to try and help us be able to take uh, communion with each other. So this is in preparation for this. Uh, it is uh, will be a help I think educationally so that we can revisit what is so important about uh, communion and how do we prepare for it. It is also less than ideal. Obviously the most ideal thing uh, for taking communion is that we are all together, um, partaking together. But since we are in these extraordinary times, I wish to share with you some thoughts today about preparing for communion and how you can be ready. And when we come to the time of taking communion, then you'll be able to do it uh, as uh, families uh, in your own homes. Let's first start with what is the origin of communion. Communion uh, came as a result of Jesus's Last Supper with the disciples. And as you've, read, if you've read through the Gospels, you'll see that in the last uh, latter part of each of the Gospels, uh, Jesus spends, um, there's much time devoted to Jesus's um, anticipated death. And in three of them, we have a recollection of the Last Supper. And there's specific uh, time and specific verses that have been devoted to this. And you'll see them in verses such as Luke chapter 22, verses 19 through 20. There we read these words. And he, that being Jesus, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to them, saying, This is my body, which is given for you, do this in remembrance of me. And likewise the cup, after they had eaten, saying, This cup that is poured out for you is the new covenant in my blood. Now the same uh, event is recalled also in Matthew chapter 26, verses 26 through 30, and Mark 14, verses 22 through, 20, uh, through 26. This meal was given in remembrance of Jesus, in remembrance of him, we still take of the bread and we still take of the cup. Now, these Gospels were written about events that took place somewhere between 30 and 33 AD. But the tradition for Christians to carry on partaking of the Lord's Supper continued. And Paul will write about it uh, some uh, 30, 35 years later in, a book, that, in a, uh, a book that we now know of as being 1 Corinthians. And he writes something very similar to what was recorded in the Gospels in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verses 23 through 26. There we read, For I received from the Lord what I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus on the night when he was betrayed took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, also, he took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. So you can see here, Paul is taking this tradition given at Jesus' last supper and he is continuing to send it through the churches that he founds, like the one in Corinth. It's a tradition that was passed on to him. And of course, we still continue in this tradition now in the year 2020 and following. Just a few obvious points about this. It is a meal. It is a meal and every meal has a host. And the host of this meal is Jesus Christ himself. Jesus is the Lord of the meal. This meal was given during the Passover. And Jesus is stating that he is the sacrifice 
He is the equivalent sacrifice that was being celebrated at the Passover. Now he is the one who is that Lamb of God. And as we partake of that uh, supper, we are saying, essentially, we trust you, Jesus, as your body was broken for us and your blood has been shed for us. And as we look to the Heavenly Father, it is through Jesus, the Son's sacrifice, that we can stand right before the Father. This is very, very significant. Eating this meal does not save. None of the reformers from which we take our tradition would have thought that the meal saved itself. Indeed, it only witnesses to the one who saves. So it's a reminder to us. It's also a participation in the fact that Jesus' death, his ongoing, his death his, gives us ongoing significance that we are in him and are right before him. As I stated a second ago, Jesus is the host of the meal. And the most important thing as we come to partaking of communion is that we are right with him. We should be right with Jesus. If there's been something that we have done recently, it would be time to confess that before Jesus, before taking the meal. We want to be as right in our own, uh, as we can imagine uh, ourselves, um, in coming before the host. It is Jesus who hosts the meal, not the pastors, not the church. It's Jesus himself who is the host of the meal. And we should be right before Jesus, and we should be right before others as best as possible. As best as we are able to have a clean conscience before other Christians, uh, that, that would be good before partaking of the Lord's Supper. Now, there's several things that are distinctives about taking of the Lord's Supper in the Schwenkfelder tradition. In fact, it was Caspar Schwenkfeld's understanding of the Lord's Supper that became a starting point of the Schwenkfelder movement so many, many years ago. He was in dialogue with Martin Luther, another reformer at that time, and also, also the Jesuits uh, about his understanding of communion. And there's a lot of writing uh, in uh, Schwenkfeld's uh, uh, correspondence that went back and forth uh, between uh, these reformers and other people within the church. And it's unfortunate that Caspar Schwenkfeld and Martin Luther and uh, others did not uh, see eye to eye on this. This eventually led to the Schwenkfelders leaving from Silesia, Germany, and then coming through Western Europe and into America. It also contributed to something that's known in the Schwenkfelder tradition as the Stilstand. The Stilstand, where uh, Schwenkfelders did not partake of communion from 1526 until the end of the 1800s. Why did they do that? Because in their eyes, they didn't believe that they were right with other believers. So how could they gather at the communion table? It was so important to be as right as possible with others that they realized that they weren't and they had to um, uh, uh, stand still with this uh, practice. But then in the 1900s, uh, late 1800s, early 1900s, so we as Schwenkfelder so once again resumed taking of communion. But it was very important within the Schwenkfelder tradition that we are right with God and that we are right with others. So the examination of oneself before taking communion, very important indeed. Schwenkfeld thought about uh, this verse from John 6, 35, when uh, he was thinking about partaking of uh, the Lord's Supper. The verse reads like this. Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me shall not hunger, and whoever believes in me shall never thirst. And Schwenkfeld spent a lot of time thinking about this verse. How could Jesus be the bread of life? What did he mean by that? And what did he mean that if we come to him, that we will never, ever hunger? And he thought about this and he connected it with communion. And how could Jesus um, uh, be this true uh, bread of life? And how could he uh, give us uh, this um, um uh, satisfy us so uh, in, uh, so incredibly and so uh, intensely. And he had to think about it and came to this conclusion, that we are eating Jesus' flesh in a spiritual way. 
It's not as if the bread becomes literally the body of Christ when um, Schweikfeld thought about eating it, nor the cup uh, and the contents within it becoming literally the blood of Christ. Instead, uh, he realized it was spiritual, a spiritual meeting, a spiritual meeting with the Lord. Nor did he take the Lutheran position, uh, which just stops short of the Catholic position that the um, uh, presence of uh, Christ is in, with, and under the bread, and in, with, and under the elements of the cup. No, uh, there was uh, something uh, spiritual happening. But he didn't go the route of Zwingli or some others um, today that simply look at the meal as being a memorial, just a commemoration. No, for Schwenkfeld, it was important that the spiritual presence of Jesus was there. So, as Schwenkfeld uh, thought uh, further about communion, though he did agree with so many within the body of Christ, it is a meal, and it is a meal that is to be taken corporately with the church as best as possible. One should prepare oneself, checking that uh, one is right with the Lord, as well as um, with others as best as possible, but it is a spiritual meeting that we have with Jesus uh, ourselves. Uh, but we will come to a portion in the service uh, where we invite you to partake of communion with us. You should have present uh, for that um, some uh, bread as well as uh, some grape juice. Let's talk about the bread. The bread at the uh, first Lord's Supper would have been considered, would have been matzah, a flat bread that is uh, still um, sold in the stores, uh, grocery stores uh, today. Matzah was the bread that was uh, traditionally used at uh, the Passover meal. And since Jesus um, uh, was initiating uh, the Last Supper at uh, the Passover meal, uh, matzah uh, would have been what he had used when he broke bread and dis distributed it with the disciples. For years at the church, though, we have uh, used um, uh, white bread, and we have made it into cubes, and we've taken very good uh, care in doing so, uh, and it's been very sanitary as we've uh, done so, but we've always cubed it. We encourage you to have either matzah or uh, to have uh, the cubed uh, bread uh, before you. The cup at the original uh, Last Supper would have been uh, uh, also part of the Passover, and that would have been wine. We have used uh, grape juice as an approximation uh, today uh, for uh, so many reasons. The first Lord's Supper would have had a common uh, communion cup, but as you know, as taking at uh, communion at Central Schwankfelder Church, we have uh, gone with individual cups, that being for sanitary reasons and also because of uh, uh, the large numbers uh, that we're serving. So we encourage you to uh, purchase grape juice or a, a reasonable approximation uh, beforehand uh, and have that ready. We encourage you to uh, have bread um, already broken and ready. And we'll give you time at that point in time to distribute um, the bread amongst those of you who have gathered uh, in the home and then also uh, grape juice among all those uh, who are there. And we encourage you to partake of communion through at that time in the online service. But the most important thing you can do in preparing to take communion is to prepare yourself spiritually through prayer. Remember, we are meeting with the Lord himself. It is a spiritual experience uh, as we consider it in the Schwenkfelder uh, tradition. Consider yourself meeting with Jesus himself. Consider yourselves uh, um, meeting with brothers and sisters as well who are partaking at the same time. And then we do hope and trust that this experience, the spiritual experience of Christ, will be with you as we go through that service and as we partake together. Brothers and sisters, these are extraordinary times that we are living in. But we do wish that you would feel the uh, deep presence of Jesus himself as we partake of communion. We think that this will be the best way forward during this time. It's not ideal but it is the best that we can do in the circumstances that we have, and we trust that you will join us prayerfully and reverently. May God bless you today as well as uh, in years ahead.